Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how I made this plate using resin infusion and a lantosauric core uh, two times. So you can just put them on each other to create like a four millimeter thickness. Uh, let's say like four millimeter is not totally correct, but I'll do another video going into detail about all the data that I collect from making plates. I've already did a video before where I show you the importance of making plates and samples. It's because like I know exactly how much resin it would take to make a square meter of this plate and maybe other plates. So another very important thing is, so this is the Lantorsoric and it has channels uh, through the hexagonal shapes um, to let the resin flow through. So in theory you don't need an infusion mesh, but I'll show you like in the video why it's important to have an infusion mesh. Because like listed on websites like, like Easy Composites or the official website of Soric, they will say it's not that important to have an infusion mesh because the Soric takes, it, takes care of that. But I've encountered some problems and I've used it many times before and I know it's uh, better to have a spiral tube on the ends and an open side of Soric just to like directly get the resin into the Soric. But I did it a bit differently just to try like the most extreme circumstances. And it's very important because if you make that mistake on a big part and this took around 30 minutes to infuse, um, even without, if I wouldn't have assisted the resin infusion, it would take much longer. And the biggest problem is your resin will start to gel and you will have a piece that didn't fully infuse. So uh, it's a lot of waste of time, a lot of waste of materials. And that's why it's important to make some samples before and know the data up front. So um, I'll take you through the video and then you can see like uh, how I helped the infusion. So it's very important to be creative and knowing what's happening during the infusion. So um, that's why I wanted to share it with you. Later on, I will have a video on my channel explaining a bit more about the data that I collect uh, and how I calculate everything. So like resin uptake, um, thicknesses that we created, um, like a little spoiler. Uh, you take two times two millimeters on this sample, but with the compression of the vacuum you only let you will only be left with 3.4 millimeter so um that's a little spoiler i'll take you through the other video later on so subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this and i'll take you through the video so i hope you like it okay so i'll quickly take you through this video so most of the things were already explained in the intro of this video but i just wanted to include this shot because this was like more of a failed infusion at this point. So you can see um, this is even fast forward. So you'll see in an annotation below that we are almost six minutes far and it's still at the beginning of the infusion. So that's a big problem. But here's the thing how you can help to solve that problem is that mostly at a failing infusion, uh, you will see a pull up of resin at the beginning of um, the resin front. And by lifting the bag, because you have less vacuum at that point, you will be able to like let the resin flow even faster through the part. So this is how I saved this infusion um, on a failed part. So this was planned to fail if you didn't know this trick. So um, here's how you can see that you can lift the bag and then it will pull all the resin all the way through and uh, get you a good result like you can see here. So I'll let you enjoy the rest of the video. Most other things are very basic that you can find in my other videos. So if you like this video, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, comment below if you have more questions and I see you guys in the next one.